Welcome to Turmeric and Tequila with your host, Kristen Olson. Questioning a better way, one gracefully disruptive conversation at a time. Welcome to Turmeric and Tequila. I am so excited to be here. As you know, it is just you and I today. There is something that's been coming up a lot in my world. So universe is speaking. We got to speak on it and we are going to jump right in. This one today is a deeply important one to me. It's going to be called monetizing your passion. Uh, There is some immediate, if we're being honest, cringe factor around that for me, because I think you should hold your passion. It's very sacred. And it's, it's of course not about the money. Um, And to monetize them. Sometimes that's just so sticky for me. And I think it is for a lot of people, but we are going to shift the narrative, shift the perspective and understand that if we want to live the dream, build the dream, you can make money off the dream and do it the right way. And in turn, and then comes from this myopic self-centered space to really, you're doing these things for the greater good. And we're going to unpack that wholly. But for right now, I want to talk about my ethos in the game and why I'm I have the credit to talk about this and then what's really inspiring it. So way back in the day, you can listen to a bunch of podcasts of hi, I'm Kristen Olson or why I'm doing this. There's a bunch in there that talk about my detailed history of my business and fitness and all the things. But this specifically, I learned early on when I got out of college, I really didn't want to boss anymore. I was D1 athlete. So I started a lacrosse business and I didn't have any money to start or any plan. I didn't really have very much. So when you have nothing, it's amazing because innovation becomes very key. And I was quick to learn about partnerships. We had camps and tournaments, everything to satisfy the lacrosse market. So I quickly learned to reach out to like lacrosse companies, ask for product. You're going to do giveaways at camps. And we started doing like marketing. Again, I just wanted some stuff and equipment to use to start the business, but it was great marketing for lacrosse back in the day. From there, we started to navigate strategic partnerships. Again, I did not call it that. I just uh, was was looking to satisfy a need, but we did some creative strategy and aligned with different companies to bring um, like healthy products into field days where we could teach lacrosse. We would bring in something healthier so the school saved some money on buying popsicles or something less healthy, and we would get to teach lacrosse. And this is a place that most companies or all companies really couldn't get into. So we we made ourselves valuable. So fast forward, all this took off. I really learned how we can build the team and find ways for support to satisfy a need without going through traditional spaces. I didn't take out a big loan. I didn't seek out an agency for PR. I didn't put all this money up, which back in the day you kind of needed to. Now there's social media and there's really amazing options. There's so much negativity around social media and some of this free technology. But on the flip side, it's really amazing for small business or anyone really looking to share their mission, vision, values, voice uh, to just put it out there. So of course we got to identify the responsibility and the core values in doing that. But there's a, there's a better way to do this. So I'm going to talk to you specifically, if you're in a space where maybe you're an athlete, I'm very protective of my fellow athletes. You know, a lot of companies will be smart and they are, they're quick to bring you on and bring you on as ambassadors and just give you product and kind of monetize your likeness. And that's extended out to influencers and any kind of space. I specialize in fitness and wellness, but, um, marathon runners or just YouTubers or TikTokers, everyone is starting to build this authentic audience because we're in a, a new space, but the recipe has not changed. So you can do what I did 25 years ago with my lacrosse company for yourself. And I've really been inspired. I've worked with influencers and brand ambassadors for a long time. And I always say that that we work with influencers with a major asterisk and the asterisk being we work to create mutually beneficial relationships for the long term. So we're not the, you know, pay for one post or paper post or paper likes or anything like that. We are here to build relationships, build community and build something solid for the long term. So Why am I especially sparked about this right now? Well, as a podcaster, uh, this landscape is growing just like when I was in lacrosse, it it all of a sudden took off CrossFit, same thing, got it in the beginning and then it took off. So I'm kind of in these like random niche spaces just by happen chance or where my journey has led me. And I'm seeing this same recipe happen with podcasting. And I see these agencies coming up and I've even attended a couple of camps where it's, you know, they're, they're kind of putting some of us together. It's like for women by women or, um, different niche communities. And really the recipe's not 
different. So I, it irks my soul that they're kind of saying it's for something. And maybe that is a good option for some, but really you can do all of this stuff yourself without going through an agency, giving a big chunk away of what you're doing and um, facilitate these relationships for the long term. Because the problem with that, when you go through an agency, you, it might be easy. It might be a quick process or they just sign it up and they monetize your likeness or your podcast or your athletic uh, following, whatever. But the problem is then you never have those relationships with any of the companies or the sponsors that they always do. So they kind of have you by the, by the, they're handcuffing, handcuffing you in the fact that if you want to repeat this revenue, you've got to go through them. Well, you don't need to do any of that. So we are here for graceful disruption. I'm here to, they say, teach a man to fish versus just giving him the fish. Well, this is how I'm teaching you how to fish on this. You can absolutely set up your own relationships, dream big. You're already a brand ambassador of so many things and you can monetize your passion. So we're going to jump right in. I'm going to get into some deeper angles on the surface level. We're talking about business and making money and really getting paid what you love to do. We're all, we're, we're all born with a purpose. I specifically work with mission-driven humans and companies with KO Alliance, my consulting company. But in reality, if you're open-minded and aware, every human has a very unique purpose and skill set and ability that they are either aware of or not aware of. So if you're not walking in alignment and using that skill set, you're really doing a disservice to yourself, but also to the world because you're you're missing out on exercising your gifts to the world. And if you being paid to do that makes you allowed and creates a space for you to do so, then let's get paid. Let's do it the right way and bring all of our gifts to the world the right way. So let's jump in. This is not really like a how to one through 10 step of breaking it down, but I really want you to, to listen to this whole podcast, listen to all the angles. Cause I'm going to tell you some do's and don'ts. I'll break it down on what to do, how to reach out. But the more important conversation piece of this is the why. And then th the process is actually not that complicated, but if you open your mind and, and shift your narrative around this, I think everyone will be way more open-minded to creating partnerships, creating sponsorships, monetizing your passion and doing it the right way to facilitate the right team. So you can live in your core values, chase your passion and get paid to do it. And then in turn, you already know, we're going to be disrupting big food, big pharma agencies, everyone that's telling us to do it a certain way and monetizing all our time and energy, get rid of all those big hands reaching into the pot and just do it yourself. So let's jump in. Um, I, I kind of talked about the why, but I'm going to read what I wrote down and this just came out of me. Like it just flowed. So I just want to, it's going to be a little choppy here, but I want you just to, to hear it all out. And I know anyone that's in a space that's looking to monetize uh, their angle. Maybe you're a marathon runner, an ultra marathon runner, you're an athlete, you're a podcaster. Listen to this before you go through anyone to monetize anything. So why living in pursuit of your purpose, AKA mission driven humans, living in alignment with passion and your core values is where you thrive. And we have, and we have to maintain impact and personal mental health. So in this day and age, we hear so much about youth suicide, uh, mental health and wellness. Like there's really deep issues. There's a huge conversation on mental health and our D1 athletes. There's some really tragic things happening. And I think if we were not so concerned with doing things the way people wanted us to do them and we could live in our truth or say when we need help or actually do the jobs we want to do, our mental health would be on the rise exponentially. But our society is still telling us to conform in certain ways where we don't need to. And it's so daunting to not go to, through that traditional path of this is how you make money. This is what you do. And it's cushy at a full-time job. It's cushy to have health insurance. It's cushy, you know, to have that, that paycheck. And sometimes with family circumstances or you've got bills. You've got to do that, but you can also start your side hustle very, very small in conjunction with that full-time job. So just keep your mind and, uh, and heart open and know that this is more than just about monetizing your passion. It's really about living, living well and living happily and living out to exercise the gifts that we actually have. Um, so a lot of the conversation, when I talk about, well, you know, sponsor, get sponsors or get partners and people are like, well, do, do people care? Do companies care? And it, you have to really shift that narrative. And sometimes I can't even reach people. And this was hard for me to be like, how do I seek partners? How do I do this? And I'm, I'm kind of in process of doing that now I'm getting back into CrossFit. So I'm going on this journey with you. And so I'm experiencing the fear around, does anyone care? Like, is someone going to buy something because I said to, uh, I do, I know that that actually does already happen. I've Thank you for joining turmeric and tequila with your host Kristen Olson. Tune in next time and don't forget to subscribe on Apple, Google Podcasts, Spotify or wherever you listen. And some of that fear appeals to put yourself out there and then ask for someone to support you. That's a lot. However, 
it's right. real. People get paid to do it and you're missing out if you're not doing it, myself included. So if that, that narrative is hard to digest, think about this. You can also partner with a charity or a cause or just the, the simple thought of mixing up the narrative of if you don't utilize your gifts and all the things that are out there, you are not being as useful as you can to this world. So you're not only neglecting yourself, you're neglecting everyone around you that could positively benefit from you being yourself. I know that sounds cliche and cheesy, but that's the truth. So if you switch the narrative of it's not just about me, I'm actually doing this because I want to be of better use to the world. And I know through these partnerships and through this monetary or spiritual funding that this can drive the message forward. And this is actually a give back. So shift that narrative because it's the truth. We need to be using our gifts and giving back out there. So here's another tip that I wrote, get your brand business voice, right? Mission, vision, and values fully understand your intention and value. So if you want more of the understanding of why am I doing this? Why is this important? Listen to my episode 140, Turmeric and Tequila. I talk about developing your mission, vision, and values. This can be for your business. This can be for your own personal brand, yourself, your podcast, your service company, whatever. It's all kind of the same. Understand what your mission, vision, and values are. I'm not going to unpack this on that, on this cast, but it's, that's a quick 14 minute cast. You can listen to it and you can have have your mission, vision, and values down on paper, um, you know, 20 minutes after the cast. It's not complicated, but it's critical to cement that foundation as you build this dream, your brand, whatever. Um, so, and as you're doing that, I would also say, I always have kind of like a charity and that give back in mind, even if it does resonate and you're comfortable stepping into the light, oh man, that's amazing. Also have some give back in mind because that's where all businesses, companies, humans, that's where we're all going. And that's what we need to be doing anyways. So here's my um, suggestion. Anytime I sit down with like influencers or companies and the, you know, they want to monetize what they're doing anyways. I have lots of athletes saying, God, I'm trying to do this full-time training. And I, even as CrossFit, I'm, I'm 41. I want to get back into the master's games and there's certain things you need. There's recovery centers, there's certain kinds of foods, there's, um, sleep stuff and mattress. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff that can support your journey. And nine times out of 10, any athlete knows we're talking about this stuff. Anyways, people say, what kind of bar do you eat? Well, you know, I usually eat real food, but when it not, I eat this, or I love to juice, but when I can't do that, I love this juice company. Cause it's cold pressed X, Y, Z. Like I will tell you what tank tops do you buy? How do you, so I'm already a natural brand ambassador for so many companies. All I have to do is put that together. And I am just like every other human out there. We are all conscious consumers, put that together and reach out out to the companies that you are already a brand ambassador for. I did another podcast um, about financial literacy with Ryan Harris. That's another one. Listen to it. And he even says, go buy stock in the company you are already wearing. So I bought stock in the car that I drive. I bought stock. And these are small, like maybe a few shares, but now you're invested and you're already supporting what you're uh, what you're doing. So now you're invested on the company side. I actually own stock in the car I drive. So now I'm not only a brand ambassador because people see me drive around in it, now I'm actually a part of the company. And if you have a million followers or two followers, or no, you're not on social media at all, never underestimate the power of your influence. Every single human out there has influence. It doesn't matter if you walk in the room with a shirt on, or maybe you're the fittest person in the class. Maybe you're the least fit, but you look, you were the bravest that showed up at a really hard class. Like you don't know how people are digesting the messages you're sending around you, your body language, the things you drink, the things you eat, that maybe the dogs you have every, we are constantly, constantly influenced by our surroundings. And that's why I'm so big about the people you keep around yourself and and, um, and then being conscious of how their decisions are impacting you and vice versa, because we are all influencers. And if you don't want to the word influencers, I get it. Just think about brand ambassadors, but in reality, don't get tied up as we say on turmeric and tequila, this podcast words are, uh, reality is nothing more than a play meaning. So it's all kind of made up. So don't get too tied up into words. I know it matters. I'm reading Brene's Brown, Brene Brown's Atlas of the heart. And it's all about communication and the importance of words. But for this call it whatever you want to call it. Just get paid for what you love to do. So number one, this is what I tell my influencers, athletes, whatever you're looking to build a brand, write down a list of your 10 favorite companies, write them down right now, your favorite things you use. Maybe it's Sono speakers and road microphones, um, you know, cotton tank tops, anything. It can be silverware. It can be your favorite dishwasher, your tires on your car, anything that you are passionate about that you talk about anyways, write those 10 companies down. And I want you to think, sit there and think about all the ways you're already supporting them. Like if you're a super fan of Ferrari, go ahead and get ambitious. This is your wish list. It's whatever. Um, 
put it down. And while you're doing this, I want you to be conscious of the mindset of abundance, knowing that truthfully, anything is possible. We won't go deep into the woo right now, but I will tell you people that have less brain cells than you do. And I don't know who I'm even talking to right now have made more money than you can even imagine on the simplest of things. So anything is truthfully possible. So think about this mindset of abundant abundance. And if you there's a million podcasters, there's a million people that are fitness coaches. Well, guess what? There's over 11 billion humans in this world. So it doesn't matter if you and I had the exact same podcast saying the exact same thing, there's still 11 billion humans that can be potential fans. And if we split that up, you know, seven and a half billion or six and a half or five and a half billion. And, uh, I'm not here for math. So math teachers ring in whatever it is. Um, there's, there's, you know, even if you have a billion people, <laughs> that's more than enough to get by. So don't worry about this competitive situation. You know, I'm a longtime athlete and I'm a competitor at heart. Competing is my love language. This is not the space to be competitive in this capacity. Know that there is an abundance mindset. So we've got our 10 companies. We've got our abundance mindset. We're thinking how we're already brand ambassadors for, for our favorites. Um, Number two, understand the authentic marketing you are already doing. So not only are we knowing that we're brand ambassadors of certain things, think about all the conversations you're having, thinking about like, oh, I have this car. Yeah. Do you like it? I really do actually, you know, the trunk is so cool on this there, you know, the warranty has been amazing working with them. The customer service so great or on the flip side, maybe it's not so great. And this, this, and this, but like, think about all the genuine endorsement or truth you're telling around companies that are already there. So now that you have your list, you you're seeing, and you're understanding how much like marketing, even though it's just an authentic conversation, it's actually technically marketing, um, is going on. I want you to see how your core values align with the companies you want to align with. So dig into these companies. If my favorite t-shirt company is this, I look on the thing and it's like, oh, you know, everything's made in America. We work really hard to keep it this. We have a give back to veterans, da, 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 like all their core values are amazing. I do highly suggest you take a core values course. I say this to every single person I work with with individual company, whether they're the looking to be an individual um, influencer or not, know your core values. Your life will be so much easier when you're living in alignment with them. But I set up a really great test. It's a super affordable and very comp comprehensive test you can do. It's on my KO Alliance site right now, www.koalliance.com. And then you click courses and resources. It's the first, it's value preference indicator. It's not my test, um, but I think it's $35, $35 and it's like seven pages of information. My top core values, I need to redo it. I think you should redo it every three years, but we're, uh, honesty, independence, and creativity. So that just lit the light on so many things of why I loved doing some past jobs. And then I didn't love some of the past jobs and they weren't within my core values. So identify yours and then see where these companies you're going to hypothetically align with, um, are in common with you. This is huge. And some companies out there, even big ones, you'd be surprised might not know this. So when you can talk about these things, they will be impressed and, or you will be consulting them on how to do this because this is where our consumers are going. And the bigger they are, the bigger the companies are usually the more disconnected they are to what's relevant because there's so many people in between the ground level, what's going on and then the top chain person that's making the decision. So I love my startups. They can evolve and adapt so quickly, but usually the money's in the big dogs. So you might be ahead of the game, even though the, they're big dogs and they've got lots, you know, deep pockets and they're big known companies. They might not be connected to this stuff. You will be shocked. So there's, I had one person that's a, a notable TikToker and she was listing off her companies and the company main one she looked off, looked up, didn't even have a TikTok account. And this is a major brand name, you know, so there's opportunity there for you to go in and not only be the brand ambassador, but be the consultant. So expand your mind. Um, so once you have your core values, I want you to make a media kit or a one pager. You can go on Canva. This does not need to be a big deal and actually straight to the point, direct information. You don't need a 20 page like deck. A one pager is great. Show every point of value. I said, making a media kit or one pager displaying all of your value, everything, social media numbers, email reach, community initiatives, volunteering, core values, mission, vision values, humanize the brand, talk about family, kids, adversity, triumph, whatever. We're in a space where we are highlighting the humanness all the way around. So if it's a clothing brand or a tire company, whatever it is, talk about how you love these tires because it you feel safer driving your family around or whatever. And you, of course, do the business side of here's how many followers I have. Here's this. But don't be worried about it. if you don't have millions of followers, it's quality over quantity. So maybe always position whatever you have. Um, in the best light. So maybe you don't have a ton of followers, but you have amazing engagement, show that. Or maybe you don't have a ton of followers, but you have a, a crap load of emails or a super involved community. Um, smart businesses will know that there's quality over quantity 
all of the days. So if you've got a hundred followers and 99 of them buy what you say, that's so much better than someone with a million followers and they're naked on Instagram. And all it is is basement creepers. They're not buying your $7 protein shake. You're trying to slang. So it's quality over quantity and our good marketing people will get this. So make sure you highlight your, your, um, all of your value and don't, and really think about this. So don't sleep on the fact that if you coach a CrossFit class three times a week, that's say 20 people, a class that's 60 people a week that you have a captive audience. That's huge. So note that you're a CrossFit coach, like really see these points of values. Think about in your life when you are of influence and yes, it is really all of the time, but uh, you know, walking around in a t-shirt. Uh, this is why I'm always in turmeric and tequila. I do have a hard rule. If you don't bleed it, no one else will. So I'm deeply proud of it. Everything I do right now around turmeric and tequila, I fund, but we are going to be seeking our partners because now we have proof of concept. We've been out here. So I'm going to be doing this with you guys. So recognize all the value and do not be afraid to put it on paper, even if it doesn't make sense. Like I said, I've been a uh, like the value could be, I've been a parent. Um, maybe I've, I've tr survived cancer and now I'm doing this. Like all of these things can be points of value, meaning like it might identify with their mission, their core values. And this can speak to a specific audience that they want to get in touch with. So make sure you do all of your value. And number five, do some research on your top companies, what their goals are and their audience. So get on their website. There's, you know, we're in a very transparent age, find out what they're involved. If are they involved, with, are they involved with charities? Maybe do they care about veterans or the breast cancer foundation, or are they doing walks? Do they make everything American made? Like find out their angles. And if there's nothing there, that's a little bit deeper. Um, I might question what they're doing. I, it doesn't mean you need to take them off your list, but I would call them or as we get into how do we contact them, I would find out a way to dig deeper. And if it's not there, it's probably on the agenda. So that this is another reason you can get involved and help them do some of these maybe charitable initiatives or get further into the CrossFit audience or working moms or whatever. And uh, you can help usher that in. So again, that's another position of value. So find out what they're already involved with and, and even if you can find out what their goals are, there's a lot of companies that will put out, um, not periodic reports, but like forecasting of things they want to do, like even meeting notes of for, you know, now it's 2022. So for 2023, like dig on the internet and see what you can find about the companies and get to the details. Cause then when you do actually get in touch with them, you can position yourself like, Oh, I saw this was your goal. Well, I actually, I have an audience of this, this, and this your exact target market. So you're positioning your value, exactly what they're looking to do for their future goals. So once you do your research, be ready to discuss how you and your voice can directly help them accomplish your goals or further their message, brand, et cetera. So I'm obviously a major advocate for Dry Bar. They are not a paid sponsor, hashtag goals, but they are very big on female entrepreneurship. Obviously I'm a female entrepreneur. So if I'm seeking them as a partner, which I absolutely will be, um, I can not only highlight, I love the blowouts. I, so it streamlines my process. It, I'm so deeply appreciative to be able to sit there, get it done. I can work and then I can make it last for five days. Um, with dry shampoo, I have all the hacks. I'll probably have to do a whole podcast on that because it is the biggest time saver, but I can say all this. In addition, I'm actually a female entrepreneur. I have a lot of female entrepreneurs that follow this. We have formation power tribe, which is a women's support group for female entrepreneurship. So there's all these extra angles that I can demonstrate to them that we're not only uh, a customer, their target market, but like their core values are in alignment with what they're doing in addition to being a target market. So think about how all the ways you can immediately present that you are satisfying what they're doing on the next level. I hope that makes sense. Number seven. So once we have like, we're clear on our mission, vision values in our business or our mission or what we're ever trying to shop ourselves. And now we've got our media kits. We've got this one page of this piece that we've put all our numbers together. Now we can reach out to our companies, the contact at the companies. And this is pretty grassroots, but it's, it really hasn't failed me yet. I think it'll change as time goes on. Just get on LinkedIn and typed in, you know, company marketing person and see how you can get connected to a direct person. Like field marketing is kind of okay, but the higher up you can get, the better the decisions are. If you're just going online and submitting something via their contact page, sometimes that's where you need to start, but it's not likely you're going to get a great answer. See if you can connect and just cold kind of cold call. I don't know what a cold LinkedIn is, but like you just try and add them and send a message and come from a heart space. Don't just say I'm an athlete. I'm looking to get free shorts, like give them like, listen, I'm a 42 year old, 41 year old master's athlete. I'd love to be involved. I love what you guys do for female entrepreneurs and athletes of a certain age. I think it speaks to like, give that human side. Cause they might be like, Oh yeah, you know what? We're actually looking for ambassadors in this, or we're doing this, or, you know, what? I'm not the right person, but called Cindy and marketing or da, da, da. like, you don't know. It's always a long shot, but you never know if it works. 
And this is, that's actually step number two. Step number one is go in your own Rolodex and see who you know, or who you're connected to. Maybe it's not exactly the brand or you have a friend, not exactly in the brand you're uh, connecting, but maybe it's a similar brand. So I'm trying to get connected to Nike, but I've got a friend at Adidas. It's the shoe world or athletic apparel is a small ass world. See if they know somebody at Adidas, like you always utilize your immediate networks. Cause you like people, it's a small world. People are pretty connected. And if they know you and like you, and they really believe in your journey, what you're doing, especially if you're trying to break through and become a professional athlete or whatever, people will go out of their way to help. And, if, and then in turn, if anyone reaches out to you do the same thing. So we have this reciprocal process where we are all connecting and gracefully disrupting the larger systems because this is how it should be. Um, um, which you already know. So don't sleep on those personal connects. Even if it seems like a few connections away, lean into that. If not, go onto LinkedIn or the website and see where you can get a hold of people at cert companies. Worst case scenario, go on their website and just submit something and say, hey, I'm looking for the marketing person to do this. You may or may not get an answer, um, but just just keep trying. There's usually a way to, to get in. And I can't say enough. It's really about the right person. Even when I'm looking for small sponsorships for like local events, it's I'll, I'll reach out to like their field marketing person. It's like, no, but if I know the owner of the company being in the business forever, they're like, oh, for sure. We'll just send you this. Da, 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 da. And it's like a quick streamline process. So you want to get to the higher ups, cultivate that relationship. You know, it's to the level where it's like, how are your kids? What are you doing this and this? I've got this event coming up. Like, how can we creatively align? I know all your regular ambassadors do this, this, and this, but like, you know, what? give me a banner. I can come hang it out at this. So I can do a, a, a Instagram live and talk about, you know, me drinking this protein shake post-workout, all that, like just try and over deliver wherever you can. So um, that's down the road. I'm jumping ahead of myself, but find a way to get to the right contact and then have that one page ready. And then like your entrance letter or whatever. And the more warm it can be in human, the better. Um, number eight, set up a call, ask what their goals are, and then display how you or your audience serve their immediate goals as exactly as they say them connect with them as humans. You can be friends. It, um, even if it doesn't seem like it's a fit. So this is kind of like what I was talking about with the humanized event. Get get on the phone, get in front of them. Anything in person or even Zoom is better. Let them see you as a human. Human. Let them see how you're bleeding this passion for whatever you're doing. That will be a sell in itself. And the good marketing people or the good intentional companies will get it. They'll see it. They'll feel it. And you can say all the right things, but if they feel your energy, that is huge. And they'll want to stay in touch with you. Most of these marketing guys have a million ambassadors to to manage, and this is why they call people like me for K Alliance to help consult and help manage some of that. But they've got a full plate. So if you're, uh, if you manage yourself, like a business, you're trustworthy, you get your stuff done, you get your posts, you have your, the correct key messaging, you over deliver where you can, they're going to want to keep stay, staying aligned with you. And they're going to want to build this relationship for the long term. So get on that phone. And this is a huge piece of advice. I learned the hard way. I was with my lacrosse company. I come and be like, we can do all these things. Like we've got this big audience da, 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 da. And, and Cliff Bar was actually one of our first big sponsors. And I remember the first meeting. Thank you for joining Turmeric and Tequila and with your host, Kristen you Olson. Decide. Tune in next time. And don't forget to subscribe on Apple, Google Podcasts, podcast, Spotify, or wherever you listen. So but they'll, if they tell you this, we need to be in 25 events across America that focus on women give them that. You don't need to say, oh, we also do this. Da, da, da. You can have that maybe on the side, but give them exactly what they're asking for. And it'll be that much harder for them to say no. So that's where that, that conversation is so valuable, where they can see you, they can hear you, they can feel your energy, but you can get the intel of exactly what they're wanting and then tell them how you can do exactly what their goals are. It's huge. So it's more than likely that they will say, okay, we'll do this. Um, if you're teeing it up for them, because they can literally push it and pull it and put it right in front of their boss and say, oh, we've got this. And we check this box and boom, and they're on to the next thing. So make it very streamlined. Number nine, have a price point in mind. I usually tell people to start out with their hourly wage and then multiply the amount of hours you think it will take you to properly do the branding that they request. Price point psychology, bigger company, bigger price. So let's unpack this. Finding out what to charge is really difficult. If you're just starting out, you can certainly be open-minded to in-kind donations or support, meaning like if a, you know, a bar company is going to say, listen, we can't pay you cash for starting out, but we can give you a bunch of free bars. And that, you know, fuels me for my long winded with my long runs or whatever. Um, that's fine. I establish a relationship, build some rapport, build, let them see your value, but don't accept that for too long because you can't pay rent in bars. So, um, 
have a price point and know like who you're talking to. If you know it's a startup and they're not gonna have a lot of money, maybe it's 50 to hundred bucks a month. Maybe it's just small, but they're somehow monetarily committed. I will say be conscious with our, our smaller guys because every dollar counts with them and they're gonna be really intent on seeing ROI, return on investment. And that is hard with influencer. There's, oh, marketing is very hard to measure. You can do some very like specific trackers with like coupons or you can see social media engagement. Even that though doesn't necessarily go into return. A lot of companies say they can show exact trackable. They can see, you know, where it is. Unless you're just doing straight up uh, advertising on the internet, fine. And companies will want to do that. So go do, you know, all your Google ads and Facebook ads. That's fine. You'll get return. But the way we're moving in, in, in the, in, a new age direction. People want in real life people supporting their company. So if by chance social media, all this becomes taboo, this overexposure, which I fully predict it will, you will have people in real life talking about and supporting your cause mission brand. So I do think the smart companies are ahead of the game and they're actually getting their genuine tribe of humans that love what they do and building them out. So know that value and, and be comfortable with, you know, a price point. Um, if you make, let's just say a hundred bucks an hour for easy, easy math as we've established, not my strong point. Um, you know, and you think it's going to take you 10 hours say, listen, this will be, um, you know, a thousand dollars a month or a thousand dollars a year for annual, like try and get your price point. And as you talk to different companies, you can get what's realistic for them in this price point psychology. If you go to a big Nike or something and you say it's a thousand bucks, they're probably not going to take you seriously. So even if it's for the same service, you need to charge more. Um, this can be a whole po podcast on why, but without getting into it, just trust me, you, if it's, if it's a bigger dog, they're going to want, they want to spend money on bigger things. And that's just what it is. And if you're going into like a wealthy room and they're often use something that's a hundred bucks and everyone there has a $50,000 watch on, they're not going to buy it. They like luxury things. They like paying more for stuff. They like being part of the elite. So read the room, recognize what where you're going and adjust your price accordingly. If you feel weird about it, whatever, don't go back and think about how you're supporting these brands and you're already supporting all the situations anyway. So the work's happening, just get paid for it. So don't, don't let that go. But price point psychology is a big one. And you can Google a lot on that to really get into the minutia of that. But in a nutshell, just bigger the company charge more. And always, you know, obviously the, the product, the service you're doing is quality. That's a key piece for maintaining a long-term relationship. Number 10, build out a strategy on how you'll promote them. So you'll probably already have a schedule, share this, add this to the media kit. So I had lacrosse tournaments and camps going all year long, no matter what. All I did was put that schedule to say together and say, here's all the events we can have you represented at. Here is the marketing strategy. Here's the amount of impressions you'll have. So this is where you can talk about, you know, I can post um, maybe social media is your angle. I can post you once a month. I will do an Instagram live once a month. I will be, I'll put your logo on my coach's shirt. So people are seeing it every day. We'll have your logo on the website, like build out that strategy so they can be like, oh, cool. This is all the angles of branding that we're going to be doing. And most of this stuff is pretty easy. If you're intentional at all about what you're doing, hashtags, links, like including a link, uh, wearing a logo on a t-shirt, like that kind of stuff. getting a banner, maybe in your garage for your videos, there's creative ways you can do. And I think the more creative you are, there's some phenomenal creative humans on TikTok or all social media, go watch other people's stuff. You think that do branding really well and, um, do what they're doing. That's I mean, it's an American way to take something, make it better. So go on there for inspiration and take note of what's, what's going on. And again, mindset of abundance, who cares? So even if someone's like using your ideas, let them like, there's enough to go around. So let's, let's just go with it. Don't go into copyright infringement, but just take, go with inspiration. Don't literally repeat like their products and things like that. Um, this is not a, a podcast on deep morality. So if you, if you need that podcast, this is not, I'm not your, I'm not your leader. That's a whole other level of, um, growth. I think that needs to happen. So these are for my evolved humans with a moral compass, but I know my list, my audience is already there. Um, okay. So we've got our strategy now, uh, 11 closing cash sponsorships may take a minute. So you can start with product. We just covered that. Be open to both, but don't be afraid to ask for money. Cause they know if you know your value and they feel that you, you know, your value, they'll be like, yeah, I'll pay for that. Think about your favorite companies. And it's, you know, the best speaker in the game. Like you're going to pay more, not only for the brand name, but for, for the quality product. So if you're in it, you know, you got it. Ask for that, that compensation monetarily. Uh, once you have a relationship in place, take care of it like family, bleed it, which should be easy if it's authentic. And I think this is the next one, but you, you don't want to overdo yourself with too many relationships. Just take care of a few it's quality over quantity here all day long. 
take care of what you have and find a way to differentiate yourself from other ambassadors, voices, sponsored athletes, whatever. So they go back to you. So when they go back and, you know, we're potentially on the horizon of um, a recession, I'm not super sold, but it doesn't matter, you know, make it so you're the one that they keep or that they're the one they can't live without. So if they're like, oh, we got 50 ambassadors, but dang, Kristen always mentions us on her podcast. We've had a bunch of people come off that. She's always in the t-shirt. She's always doing this. Or we loved how she, you know, put this recipe out. We didn't even ask her like do the things where they can't let you go. And then you make yourself so valuable. And if you're really a fan of this stuff, again, you're probably doing it anyway. So just make sure you highlight and you communicate that to them. But really the relationships are everything and treat people how you want to be treated. This is old school stuff, but it's so real. And you'd be surprised how many people just take the check, do the minimum and think that that relationship is going to continue. They're going to get it continued to get sponsored and you're not. Again, there's 11 billion humans. So the flip side of that is there's a lot of other places people can go, but if you make yourself valuable and make yourself um, an asset to them, they're going to keep you around and vice versa. Put it on your calendar to keep in touch and aim to over deliver, but not give away the farm. So this is that careful balance. Maintain it like a relationship. Keep in touch. Keep it human. If someone goes um, from one company to another, there's lots of that in health and wellness. They'll go from Adidas to Nike to whatever. Stay in touch with them. Like maintain these relationships, not even because it's a business and you're going to potentially make money off of it, but just because it's the right thing to do. It's a small world and keep your good connects. That that just serves you and it makes a journey fun. Like you like to play with your favorite teammates, your best friends, like these, this is your team. So treat it like that and keep, keep your homies in the mix. Uh, Number 14, aim for multi-year deals, but if not have a combo for the next year at the end of the current year. So you are ahead of the budgets, they go fast, make it so they have to have, so they cannot not have you in the mix, double negatives. Um, this is, if you want to get multi-year deal, sometimes you don't over want to lock yourself down because if things do grow, you know, maybe one apparel company you love, but now this new up and coming apparel company loves you and they can, you know, offer you double. You still want to stay loyal. It's definitely not all about the money. Um, but on the flip side, you can also take care of your family, take care of yourself. If there's a bit bigger, larger opportunity and maybe a company's not evolving where you want it to evolve, don't be afraid of that. So loyalty is, is everything. And you want to make sure everyone's evolving in the same capacity. So multi-level year deals are tough, but the budgets go fast. So start to have these money conversations the year before, um, or that year that have the conversations for the next year, the year prior. So now in 2022, I'm going to be having conversations for 2023. The closer we get to like December and January one, usually budgets are wrapping up way before then, but you want to get ahead of the game because come January one, they're off and running with their budget. And most things are already, already, already going to be allocated for. So if you're trying to get sponsored for 2023, you need to be doing that now while there's money and there's planning. Cause come January one, they've got their crew, they've got their marketing strategy. So get ahead of the game. Um, 15, we talked about this focus on less quality, focus on having quality relationships versus lots of casual ones. The audience will know if you have a million signs in your yard, people can't see them. It dilutes the relationship. It's a lot to keep up with. Have a few signs, get a little bit more from fewer people, take care of them. There's less relationships to maintain, but do it in that way. So you, you know, you don't need a million partners, have a few that you really take care of and then turn can take care of you, um, and keep it really authentic. If you're somebody that's just taken on everything to get the paycheck, you're going to lose the validity with your audience and they're going to not continue to engage by what you're saying or just believe. So, you know, hold your audience in such sacred space and know that your responsibility to represent the best or things you authentically care about is number one, that genuine endorsement. So as long as you maintain that and you're truthful and you're honest, the audience will know and they will stay on your team with you and so will your companies and sponsors and supporters. 16, maintaining uh, genuine endorsement at all times, stay true and it will pay dividends. This is the way the world is going and it's the truth. It's no longer, you can go from Pepsi to Coke to whatever and no one's gonna notice, they do notice. And if you're not loyal, people see that and people don't wanna be around humans that aren't loyal in any capacity. They don't want to further represent that. So the more we get into this transparent age, more and more companies are going to be aware of this transparency, transparency and the conscious consumer. So take time to do it right. You don't need to have a million partners, just get a few and then really do it like with your moral compass um, in very high regard. Number 17, think about uh, the how and why that you buy the things you do. So if you're wondering how to connect with consumers or your audience or whatever, think about why you buy something. Like I said, it's the best speaker. The sound is unbelievable. I've camped with it. I've dropped it. The quality is amazing. Like think about why you really get behind these things and why you might even pay for something that's a little bit more expensive. I think our young people are a phenomenal example of this. Even if they've only got $10 for lunch, they'll buy a $6 juice that's local that maybe they know who made it or where it's from or how clean it is. 
um, it's pretty amazing how conscious our young people are. So think about what you're doing. And then number 18, this leads into that. It's we vote with our dollars and things are more transparent than ever. So knowing every time I go to support this small business, it's not just, you know, a cleaner product for me or something I feel good about. This is elevating a small business. And in turn, maybe they can, you know, further get into uh, shelf spaces where it's all just big food and major companies that own all this, but now we're creating healthier, more conscious options. Whereas consumers, all we had was, you know, to pick from five things. Now these little guys are, are wheeling their way in and we have healthier options to choose from. We can choose, you know, black owned businesses or women owned businesses or businesses that give back to veterans, like these, these little purchases and voting with our dollars are huge. So as you're conscious with that, and you're supporting brands know that your consumers will be having that conversation as well. And they will choose you because you're doing this with such mission driven values and intention. They will want to support the companies you're aligning with because they know it's all intentional. So here's the big takeaway. The big takeaway, it's not about marketing or making money. It's about living in purpose and intention and aligning with like-minded humans. Collectively, we can facilitate and elevate good people doing great things. This mindset will disrupt some of the current big food, big pharma, et cetera. And in turn, we'll all be living in our mission and saving lives with such positive, positive mental health. So just when you think it's all about you or you're worried that it's too much about you, it's not make positive changes in your world to make yourself happy, chase your passions, exercise your gifts. It's your duty. Everything around you will change when you're, when you live in alignment of your values and it will inspire those around you to do the same. If the right partners will support you emotionally and monetarily, and it's a mutually beneficial partnership, why wouldn't you do this? So this is amazing for me to hear for myself, because I'm in this journey with you. But if you're in a spot of wondering, how do I monetize what I'm doing before you monetize anything, your podcast, or you sign up for these agencies, see what you can do yourself. I know some of us are super busy and you want to streamline some of this process of selling ads or sponsors or whatever, but take the time to build it out. So you're cultivating these relationships for the long term, So you can then in turn, just your passion can then be your work and how you make money and you can live happier, live freer and fully exercising your gifts. And I assure you that will change everything and everyone around you. When you are happier, everyone around you is happier. Your vibration changes. You can inspire people to take this kind of leap. I mean, the, the ripple effect is so massive. It's critical. We let go of this myopic space around, I don't want to be on social media. I don't like it. Or it's TikTok's cringy or this and that. I hear you. And Step into this space that allows you to highlight your gifts, potentially monetize them, doing you the dream and understanding how you can do that because now good companies are wanting to support humans like yourself. This is an amazing, exciting time to disrupt um, all the people and the humans, our parents, our grandparents' generation that just did, did the hard jobs, did the work because that's what you did no matter what. And then they you did it to support their families. We're in an age where you can actually do your passion, get paid for it, have more time with your family and do things your way. So that is the quick ish uh, 411 on how to build your team and monetize your passions. I'm an accessible human. Reach out to me if you have questions, you have comments. I've talked to so many people that are taking this leap. So I hope this is, is beneficial. We might do a follow up cast, but there, if there's a will, there's a way to truly live the way you want to live within your core values, live within alignment and start making money just off the dream. So tune into what I'm doing. I'm going to be having a course coming out. I've been seeing this for a while. It's still in process on how to build brand ambassadors for companies specifically. But I think if you're an influencer, you can take this course and I even teach companies how to build out things for their brand ambassadors and just keeping this mindset. It's really not just about making money. It's about living in alignment and then getting humans, IRL building community that are excited about the same things and getting people around us that are, you know, believing the same gospel and sharing in our journey experience, our days and our time are finite. So do what you want to do, be around the people that you love that inspire you. And let's disrupt some of this uh, negativity and things that we're supposed to do and supposed to be living, supposed to be working. We can do it our way. So let's go T stay tuned for my journey. We're going to have the course, the whole human approach is coming out. Um, it's really just a conversation around he health, wellness, physical fitness, core values, uh, things of just how we can live our most dialed in life and live truthfully in alignment. So that's what I got for you. I am long winded as ever it's hot in here. Um, but go, go build your brand. I can't wait to see if you have success stories or brands that you love or anything, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'm so deeply passionate on this. I think we've got some incredible humans doing very varsity things that have so much potential to just disrupt the game on so many levels and live in their passions and get paid to do it. And in turn, you'll be inspiring people to do that on another level. So good luck to you. Let me know how it goes. Signing out. Cheers.
Thank you for joining Turmeric and Tequila with your host, Kristen Olson. Tune in next time and don't forget to subscribe on Apple, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen. 